Hello everybody, my name is Chantel, and for this Active HDL tutorial, I'm going to be going over the FSM editor. And this robust editor takes advantage of the intuitive visual design of FSMs, and it allows you to create the graphical model of your machine, and then use that visual format to automatically generate the HDL code. So to get started, I'm going to click on Add New File. We can add a state diagram from scratch. But for this tutorial, I'm going to be using the state diagram wizard. We can add, keep this box checked. I'm going to stick with VHDL and I'm going to label this FSM as test. From here, clicking on new, we'll add new ports and we can change our port direction as well as the port size if you'd like. I'm going to keep Z as an output port and then I'm going to add a clock port. And here we're going to go to type. And in here, you could change the port property. And this, these options will vary depending on the HDL you're using. And from here, I'm going to give it the clock attribute. Hit OK. And now we'll add the rest of our signals. Now we'll hit Next. And in this window, we can add our number of states, change the visual layout, add directional transitions, and add our reset state, which I'll set to S1. You can also add the edit the design unit header, as well as advanced states. Now I'm going to click on finish, and our wizard will generate the basis of our FSM. From here, we could see some new toolbars opened up. We have the FSM view toolbar, the hierarchical state toolbar, and the FSM editor toolbar. And all of these options can also be accessed in the main bar, and you just click on FSM. Now inside of this file, we can click and drag all the different parts of our machine. And if you wanted to edit them, you can just double click or right click on them. And you could edit their different properties from there. Now I'm going to add some transitions. And, or sorry, states, I'm adding some states. And now we can add some transitions. And now we can add some transitions conditions. If you have the same repeating condition for multiple transitions, you can just copy and paste it. And now from here, we can add our state actions. If you're making a melee design, you can also add transition entry and exit actions. And we'll add one to state three. If you ever wanted to add a junction in your machine, you could do so by clicking on this junction button. And if you want to add a delay state, you could just use this delay state button. And you could also edit the delay amount as well. All right, we're almost done here, but we need to give our machine a clock enable and a reset. And so to do that, we're just going to edit our reset and enable states. So we're going to give our reset the reset property and our enable port, the clock enable port property. And now to add it to our machine, we just right click on the machine's white space and we could change the machine name. I'll set it to primary. And now we can give it the enable signal as well as the reset signal. And you can also edit other machine properties from here. Now we hit OK and we could see that we have the name changed, the enable, and our reset. I'm also going to add a hierarchical state into this machine. And what hierarchical states do is that they act as a junction and they also help reduce the clunkiness of an FSM if it gets too big. So for here, to make it a hierarchical state, just right click and click on hierarchical state. And to go down into that sub FSM, we just click on push hierarchical state, or you can right click as well. And we'll be taken into the little sub diagram. From here, I'm going to add a link. And what a link does is it allows you to transition to a state that's in a different hierarchy 
as you can see, I'm going to connect this one to state five, and I'm going to change the state five name to link. Click OK. And going back to our hierarchy state, we can now add some transition conditions. And now we can assign the link the state of the state that the link is connecting to. And now we can go back to our main machine or our main hierarchy FSM. And now I'm going to show you guys how to create a secondary machine. And to do this, we need to first resize our first machine to make room for the second one. And now we'll go to FSM, new machine. We can see that a new machine space has popped up. And I'm going to add some states and some transitions here. The cool thing is too, with these arrows, you can also change the shape of them. And now we want this machine to trigger off of primary. So we're going to create a signal. Click on this signal box right here and click on the outer part outside of the machine, otherwise it will be a variable instead of a signal. And now we'll label this as secondary enable and give it the clock enable value. Hit OK. And since we want the second enable to react off a of primary, we need to assign it and have it trigger somewhere in the primary FSM. So I'm going to do it in state three and you just double click on the action and you'll be led to the state action editor here. And now I'm going to assign second enable as one. Click save. And now we have our option there. And now we can edit our machine to get those properties. So I'm going to click on properties. I'm going to name this machine secondary. And now I'm going to give it the clock. And now the second enable as our clock enable. And now add a reset, give it the reset state to S7 and add the reset signal to it. And now we can hit OK. And now the second machine is finished. Now that we have our entire machine completed, we can now generate the HDL code. First, we go to FSM and go to code generation settings. We could change general options the design unit name as well as the design unit header. And in general, if you want to use enable FSM coverage, just click this box, but just make sure that you have ACDB coverage turned on as well as FSM enabled inside of your preferences. You can also change the HDL style as well as HDL specific options. Now we'll hit OK and we can finally hit generate HDL code. We can see that it says HDL code generation completed. And now if we click on our finite state machine and expand it, we can see that our VHDL code has been generated. And now we can finally test bench our FSM. To do this, let's go back to the diagram. And now we'll go to FSM and generate test bench. From here, you could choose from multiple strategies. The first one being uh, transitioning through all the states, the second one being through all the transitions, and the third one is to test the reset signal after reaching every state. So I'm just going to stick with one of them. Let's just do all transitions, or strategy one, where I can go through all states and hit generate. We can see that the FSM has been, uh, the test bench has been finishing generating, and we could see that a new folder has been created with the macro file for the test bench as well as the test bench itself. And now we're going to compile all, make sure everything works. And now we're going to execute the macro by right clicking and executing. Executing the macro initializes and generates the waveform of our test bench, as you could see right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to reinitialize the simulation for our FSM. I'm going to add and drag signals from the FSM design. And now I'm going to go back to our state diagram and we could see that once the 
simulation has been initialized, our FSM is now highlighted a little differently. Yellow indicates the current state that the FSM is at, and now we can trace over transition. Now it goes inside, and this is our current state. Going back, we could see that the dark yellow, or the golden color, is the previous state. And once we transition again, we can see how it goes here, it's at link, and we could see the dark green indicates that it's the next state. And when we go back to our waveform, we can see that as we continue to transition through our FSM, the test bench also updates. And we could just keep going and going. We could see that the kernel stops at a certain time after, as we keep transitioning until there are no more test vectors to simulate. And with that, that concludes this tutorial on the FSM editor. Hope you guys found this helpful, and thank you guys for watching.